An atomic clock is a clock device that uses an electron transition frequency in the microwave, optical, or ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum of atoms as a frequency standard for its timekeeping element. Atomic clocks are the most accurate time and frequency standards known, and are used as primary standards for international time distribution services, to control the wave frequency of television broadcasts, and in global navigation satellite systems such as GPS. The principle of operation of an atomic clock is based on atomic physics, it uses the microwave signal that electrons in atoms emit when they change energy levels. Early atomic clocks were based on masers at room temperature. Currently, the most accurate atomic clocks first cool the atoms to near absolute zero temperature by slowing them with lasers and probing them in atomic fountains in a microwave-filled cavity. An example of this is the NIST F1 atomic clock, one of the national primary time and frequency standards of the United States. The accuracy of an atomic clock depends on two factors. The first factor is temperature of the sample atoms. Colder atoms move much more slowly, allowing longer probe times. The second factor is the frequency and intrinsic width of the electronic transition. Higher frequencies and narrow lines increase the precision. National standards agencies in many countries maintain a network of atomic clocks which are intercompared and kept synchronized to an accuracy of 10-9 seconds per day approximately one part in 1014. These clocks collectively define a continuous and stable time scale, the International Atomic Time for civil time, another time scale is disseminated, Coordinated Universal Time UTC. UTC is derived from TIE, but has added leap seconds from UT1, to account for the rotation of the Earth with respect to the solar time. History The idea of using atomic transitions to measure time was suggested by Lord Kelvin in 1879. Magnetic resonance, developed in the 1930s by Isidore Rabi, became the practical method for doing this. In 1945, Rabi first publicly suggested that atomic beam magnetic resonance might be used as the basis of a clock. The first atomic clock was an ammonia absorption line device at 23,870.1 MHz built in 1949 at the U.S. National Bureau of Standards NBS, now NIST. It was less accurate than existing quartz clocks, but served to demonstrate the concept. The first accurate atomic clock, a cesium standard based on a certain transition of the cesium-133 atom, was built by Lewis Essen and Jack Perry in 1955 at the National Physical Laboratory in the UK. Calibration of the cesium standard atomic clock was carried out by the use of the astronomical time scale ephemeris time ET. This led to the internationally agreed definition of the latest SI second being based on atomic time. Equality of the ET second with the atomic clock SI second has been verified to within one part in 1010. The SI second thus inherits the effect of decisions by the original designers of the ephemeris time scale, determining the length of the ET second. Since the beginning of development in the 1950s, atomic clocks have been based on the hyperfine transitions in hydrogen-1, cesium-133, and rubidium-87. The first commercial atomic clock was the Atomicron, manufactured by the National Company. More than 50 were sold between 1956 and 1960. This bulky and expensive instrument was subsequently replaced by much smaller rack-mountable devices, such as the Hewlett-Packard Model 5060 cesium frequency standard, released in 1964. In the late 1990s, four factors contributed to major advances in clocks: laser cooling and trapping of atoms. So-called high-finesse Fabry-Perot cavities for narrow laser line widths. Precision laser spectroscopy. Convenient counting of optical frequencies using optical combs. In August 2004, NIST scientists demonstrated a chip-scale atomic clock. According to the researchers, the clock was believed to be 100th the size of any other. It requires no more than 125 milliwatts, making it suitable for battery-driven applications. This technology became available commercially in 2011. Ion trap experimental optical clocks are more precise than the current cesium standard. In April 2015, NASA announced that it planned to deploy a Deep Space Atomic Clock a miniaturized, ultra-precise mercury-ion atomic clock, into outer space. 
NASA said that the DSAC would be much more stable than other navigational clocks. Mechanism Since 1967, the International System of Units SI has defined the second as the duration of 9,192,631,770 cycles of radiation corresponding to the transition between two energy levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. In 1997, the International Committee for Weights and Measures CIPM added that the preceding definition refers to a cesium atom at rest at a temperature of absolute zero. This definition makes the cesium oscillator the primary standard for time and frequency measurements, called the cesium standard. The definitions of other physical units, e.g., the volt and the meter, rely on the definition of the second. The actual time reference of an atomic clock consists of an electronic oscillator operating at microwave frequency. The oscillator is arranged so that its frequency determining components include an element that can be controlled by a feedback signal. The feedback signal keeps the oscillator tuned in resonance with the frequency of the electronic transition of cesium or rubidium. The core of the atomic clock is a tunable microwave cavity containing a gas. In a hydrogen maser clock the gas emits microwaves the gas maces on a hyperfine transition, the field in the cavity oscillates, and the cavity is tuned for maximum microwave amplitude. Alternatively, in a cesium or rubidium clock, the beam or gas absorbs microwaves and the cavity contains an electronic amplifier to make it oscillate. For both types the atoms in the gas are prepared in one electronic state prior to filling them into the cavity. For the second type the number of atoms which change electronic state is detected and the cavity is tuned for a maximum of detected state changes. Most of the complexity of the clock lies in this adjustment process. The adjustment tries to correct for unwanted side effects, such as frequencies from other electron transitions, temperature changes, and the spreading in frequencies caused by ensemble effects. One way of doing this is to sweep the microwave oscillator's frequency across a narrow range to generate a modulated signal at the detector. The detector's signal can then be demodulated to apply feedback to control long-term drift in the radio frequency. In this way, the quantum mechanical properties of the atomic transition frequency of the cesium can be used to tune the microwave oscillator to the same frequency, except for a small amount of experimental error. When a clock is first turned on, it takes a while for the oscillator to stabilize. In practice, the feedback and monitoring mechanism is much more complex. A number of other atomic clock schemes are in use for other purposes. Rubidium standard clocks are prized for their low cost, small size commercial standards are as small as 17 cc and short-term stability. They are used in many commercial, portable and aerospace applications. Hydrogen macers often manufactured in Russia have superior short-term stability compared to other standards, but lower long-term accuracy. Often, one standard is used to fix another. For example, some commercial applications use a rubidium standard periodically corrected by a global positioning system receiver see GPS disciplined oscillator. This achieves excellent short-term accuracy, with long-term accuracy equal to and traceable to the U.S. national time standards. The lifetime of a standard is an important practical issue. Modern rubidium standard tubes last more than 10 years, and can cost as little as $50. Cesium reference tubes suitable for national standards currently last about 7 years and cost about $35,000. The long-term stability of hydrogen maser standards decreases because of changes in the cavity's properties over time. Modern clocks use magneto-optical traps to cool the atoms for improved precision. Topic: <inaudible> Power consumption. The power consumption of atomic clocks varies with their size. Atomic clocks on the scale of one chip require less than 30 milliwatt. Primary frequency and time standards like the United States Time Standard atomic clocks, NIST F1 and NIST F2, use far greater quantities of power. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Evaluated accuracy. The evaluated accuracy UBE reports of various primary frequency and time standards are published online by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures 
Several frequency and time standards groups as of 2015 reported UB values in the 2 times 10 minus 16 to 3 times 10 minus 16 range. In 2011, the NPL cesium fluoride cesium fountain clock operated by the National Physical Laboratory (NPL), which serves as the United Kingdom primary frequency and time standard, was improved regarding the two largest sources of measurement uncertainties: distributed cavity phase and microwave lensing frequency shifts. In 2011 this resulted in an evaluated frequency uncertainty reduction from UB. Topic 4.1 times 10 minus 16 to UB. 2.3 times 10 minus 16. The lowest value for any primary national standard at the time. At this frequency uncertainty, the NPL cesium fluoride is expected to neither gain nor lose a second in about 138 million 138 times 106 years. The NIST F2 cesium fountain clock operated by the National Institute of Standards and Technology NIST, was officially launched in April 2014, to serve as a new U.S. civilian frequency and time standard, along with the NIST F1 standard. The planned UB performance level of NIST F2 is 1 times 10 minus 16. At this planned performance level the NIST F2 clock will not lose a second in at least 300 million years. NIST F2 was designed using lessons learned from NIST F1. The NIST F2 key advance compared to the NIST F1 is that the vertical flight tube is now chilled inside a container of liquid nitrogen, at minus 193 degrees Celsius minus 315.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This cycled cooling dramatically lowers the background radiation and thus reduces some of the very small measurement errors that must be corrected in NIST F1. The first in house accuracy evaluation of NIST F2 reported a UB of 1.1 times 10 minus 16. However, a published scientific criticism of that NIST F2 accuracy evaluation described problems in its treatment of distributed cavity phase shifts and the microwave lensing frequency shift, which is treated significantly differently than in the majority of accurate fountain clock evaluations. The next NIST F2 submission to the BIPM in March, 2015 again reported a UB of 1.5 times 10 minus 16, but did not address the standing criticism. There have been neither subsequent reports to the BIPM from NIST F2 nor has an updated accuracy evaluation been published. At the request of the Italian Standards Organization, NIST fabricated many duplicate components for a second version of NIST F2, known as IT cesium fluoride to be operated by the Istituto Nazionale di Ricerca Metrologica INRAM, NIST's counterpart in Turin, Italy. As of February 2016 the IT cesium fluoride cesium fountain clock started reporting a UB of 1.7 times 10 minus 16 in the BIPM reports of evaluation of primary frequency standards. Research Most research focuses on the often conflicting goals of making the clocks smaller, cheaper, more portable, more energy efficient, more accurate, more stable and more reliable. The Atomic Clock Ensemble in Space is an example of clock research. <laughs> Secondary representations of the second A list of frequencies recommended for secondary representations of the second is maintained by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures BIPM since 2006 and is available online. The list contains the frequency values and the respective standard uncertainties for the rubidium microwave transition and for several optical transitions. These secondary frequency standards are accurate at the level of parts in 10-18, however, the uncertainties provided in the list are in the range of parts in 10-14-10-15 since they are limited by the linking to the cesium primary standard that currently 2015 defines the second. For context, a femtosecond 1 times 10 -15 s is to a second what a second is to about 31.71 million 31.71 times 106 years and an attosecond 1 times 10 -18 s is to a second what a second is to about 31.71 billion 31.71 times 109 years. 
21st century experimental atomic clocks that provide non cesium based secondary representations of the second are becoming so precise that they are likely to be used as extremely sensitive detectors for other things besides measuring frequency and time. For example, the frequency of atomic clocks is altered slightly by gravity, magnetic fields, electrical fields, force, motion, temperature and other phenomena. The experimental clocks tend to continue improving, and leadership in performance has been shifted back and forth between various types of experimental clocks. Quantum clocks In March 2008, physicists at NIST described a quantum logic clock based on individual ions of beryllium and aluminium. This clock was compared to NIST's mercury ion clock. These were the most accurate clocks that had been constructed, with neither clock gaining nor losing time at a rate that would exceed a second in over a billion years. In February 2010, NIST physicists described a second, enhanced version of the quantum logic clock based on individual ions of magnesium and aluminium. Considered the world's most precise clock in 2010 with a fractional frequency and accuracy of 8.6 times 10 minus 18, it offers more than twice the precision of the original. The accuracy of experimental quantum clocks has since been superseded by experimental optical lattice clocks based on strontium 87 and ytterbium 171. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Optical clocks. The theoretical move from microwaves is the atomic escapement for clocks to light in the optical range harder to measure but offering better performance earned John L. Hall and Theodore W. Hench the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2005. One of 2012's physics noblists, David J. Wineland, is a pioneer in exploiting the properties of a single ion held in a trap to develop clocks of the highest stability. New technologies, such as femtosecond frequency combs, optical lattices, and quantum information, have enabled prototypes of next-generation atomic clocks. These clocks are based on optical rather than microwave transitions. A major obstacle to developing an optical clock is the difficulty of directly measuring optical frequencies. This problem has been solved with the development of self-referenced mode locked lasers, commonly referred to as femtosecond frequency combs. Before the demonstration of the frequency comb in 2000, terahertz techniques were needed to bridge the gap between radio and optical frequencies, and the systems for doing so were cumbersome and complicated. With the refinement of the frequency comb, these measurements have become much more accessible and numerous optical clock systems are now being developed around the world. As in the radio range, absorption spectroscopy is used to stabilize an oscillator—in this case a laser. When the optical frequency is divided down into a countable radio frequency using a femtosecond comb, the bandwidth of the phase noise is also divided by that factor. Although the bandwidth of laser phase noise is generally greater than stable microwave sources, after division it is less. The primary systems under consideration for use in optical frequency standards are Single ions isolated in an ion trap Neutral atoms trapped in an optical lattice and Atoms packed in a three-dimensional quantum gas optical lattice, these techniques allow the atoms or ions to be highly isolated from external perturbations, thus producing an extremely stable frequency reference. Atomic systems under consideration include AL+, HG+, 2+, HG Sr, Sr+, 2+, IN+, 3+, MG, CA, CA+, YB+, 2+, 3+, YB and TH+, 3+. The rare earth element ytterbium YB is valued not so much for its mechanical properties but for its complement of internal energy levels. A particular transition in YB atoms, at a wavelength of 578 nm, currently provides one of the world's most accurate optical atomic frequency standards," said Mariana Sofronova. The estimated amount of uncertainty achieved corresponds to a YB clock uncertainty of about one second over the lifetime of the universe so far, 15 billion years, according to scientists at the Joint Quantum Institute JQI, and the University of Delaware in December 2012. In 2013 optical lattice clocks OLCs were shown to be as good as or better than cesium fountain clocks. 
Two optical lattice clocks containing about 10,000 atoms of strontium-87 were able to stay in synchrony with each other at a precision of at least 1.5 times 16 which is as accurate as the experiment could measure. These clocks have been shown to keep pace with all three of the cesium fountain clocks at the Paris Observatory. There are two reasons for the possibly better precision. Firstly, the frequency is measured using light, which has a much higher frequency than microwaves, and secondly, by using many atoms, any errors are averaged. Using a terbium-171 atoms, a new record for stability with a precision of 1.6 times 18 over a seven-hour period was published on of August 2013. At this stability, the two optical lattice clocks working independently from each other used by the NIST research team would differ less than a second over the age of the universe 13. 8 times 109 years, this was 10 times better than previous experiments. The clocks rely on 10,000 ytterbium atoms cooled to 10 microkelvin and trapped in an optical lattice. A laser at 578 nanometers excites the atoms between two of their energy levels. Having established the stability of the clocks, the researchers are studying external influences and evaluating the remaining systematic uncertainties, in the hope that they can bring the clock's accuracy down to the level of its stability. An improved optical lattice clock was described in a 2014 Nature paper. In 2015 Jilla evaluated the absolute frequency uncertainty of an strontium-87 optical lattice clock at 2.1 times 18 which corresponds to a measurable gravitational time dilation for an elevation change of 2 cm on planet Earth that according to Jilla, NIST fellow Jun Yi is "...getting really close to being useful for relativistic geodesy." At this frequency uncertainty, this Jilla optical lattice optical clock is expected to neither gain nor lose a second in more than 15 billion 15 times 109 years. In 2017 Jilla reported an experimental 3D quantum gas strontium optical lattice clock in which strontium-87 atoms are packed into a tiny three-dimensional cube at 1,000 times the density of previous one-dimensional clocks, like the 2015 Jilla clock. A synchronous clock comparison between two regions of the 3D lattice yielded a record level of synchronization of 5 times 10 minus 19 in one hour of averaging time. The 3D quantum gas strontium optical lattice clock's centerpiece is an unusual state of matter called a degenerate Fermi gas, a quantum gas for Fermi particles. The experimental data shows the 3D quantum gas clock achieved a precision of 3.5 times 10 minus 19 in about two hours. According to Jun Yi, this represents a significant improvement over any previous demonstrations. Yi further commented, The most important potential of the 3D quantum gas clock is the ability to scale up the atom numbers, which will lead to a huge gain in stability. And, The ability to scale up both the atom number and coherence time will make this new generation clock qualitatively different from the previous generation. In 2018 Jilla reported the 3D quantum gas clock reached a frequency precision of 2.5 times 10 minus 19 over 6 hours. At this frequency uncertainty, this 3D quantum gas clock would lose or gain about 0.1 seconds over the age of the universe. Optical clocks are currently 2018 still primarily research projects, less mature than rubidium and cesium microwave standards, which regularly deliver time to the International Bureau of Weights and Measures (BIPM) for establishing international atomic time (TAI). As the optical experimental clocks move beyond their microwave counterparts in terms of accuracy and stability performance this puts them in a position to replace the current standard for time, the cesium fountain clock. In the future this might lead to redefine the cesium microwave-based SI second and other new dissemination techniques at the highest level of accuracy to transfer clock signals will be required that can be used in both shorter range and longer range frequency comparisons between better clocks and to explore their fundamental limitations without significantly compromising their performance. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Clock comparison techniques. 
In June 2015, the European National Physical Laboratory (NPL) in Teddington, UK, the French Department of Time Space Reference Systems at the Paris Observatory (LNESYRTE), the German German National Metrology Institute (PTB) in Braunschweig, and Italy's Istituto Nazionale di Ricerca Metrologica (INRAM) in Turin Labs have started tests to improve the accuracy of current state-of-the-art satellite comparisons by a factor 10, but it will still be limited to one part in. 1 times 10 minus 16. These four European labs are developing and host a variety of experimental optical clocks that harness different elements in different experimental setups and want to compare their optical clocks against each other and check whether they agree. In a next phase these labs strive to transmit comparison signals in the visible spectrum through fiber optic cables. This will allow their experimental optical clocks to be compared with an accuracy similar to the expected accuracies of the optical clocks themselves. Some of these labs have already established fiber optic links, and tests have begun on sections between Paris and Teddington, and Paris and Braunschweig. Fiber optic links between experimental optical clocks also exist between the American NIST lab and its partner lab Jilla, both in Boulder, Colorado but these span much shorter distances than the European network and are between just two labs. According to Fritz Reilly, a physicist at PTB, Europe is in a unique position as it has a high density of the best clocks in the world. In August 2016 the French LNESYRTE in Paris and German PTB in Braunschweig reported the comparison and agreement of two fully independent experimental strontium lattice optical clocks in Paris and Braunschweig at an uncertainty of 5 times 10 minus 17 via a newly established phase coherent frequency link connecting Paris and Braunschweig, using 1,415 km 879 miles of telecom fiber optic cable. The fractional uncertainty of the whole link was assessed to be 2.5 times 10 minus 19, making comparisons of even more accurate clocks possible. Topic: <laughs> Applications. The development of atomic clocks has led to many scientific and technological advances such as a system of precise global and regional navigation satellite systems, and applications in the Internet, which depend critically on frequency and time standards. Atomic clocks are installed at sites of time signal radio transmitters. They are used at some long wave and medium wave broadcasting stations to deliver a very precise carrier frequency. Atomic clocks are used in many scientific disciplines, such as for long baseline interferometry and radio astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> Global navigation satellite systems The Global Positioning System GPS operated by the U.S. Air Force Space Command provides very accurate timing and frequency signals. A GPS receiver works by measuring the relative time delay of signals from a minimum of four, but usually more, GPS satellites, each of which has at least two onboard cesium and as many as two rubidium atomic clocks. The relative times are mathematically transformed into three absolute spatial coordinates and one absolute time coordinate. GPS time GPST, is a continuous time scale and theoretically accurate to about 14 nanoseconds. However, most receivers lose accuracy in the interpretation of the signals and are only accurate to 100 nanoseconds. The GPST is related to but differs from TI International Atomic Time and UTC Coordinated Universal Time. GPST remains at a constant offset with TI TI GPST equals 19 seconds and like TI does not implement leap seconds. Periodic corrections are performed to the onboard clocks in the satellites to keep them synchronized with ground clocks. The GPS navigation message includes the difference between GPST and UTC. As of July 2015, GPST is 17 seconds ahead of UTC because of the leap second added to UTC on 30 June 2015. Receivers subtract this offset from GPS time to calculate UTC and specific timezone values. The Global Navigation Satellite System operated by the Russian Aerospace Defense Forces provides an alternative to the Global Positioning System system and is the second navigational system in operation with global coverage and of comparable precision. 
GLONASS time is generated by the GLONASS central synchronizer and is typically better than 1000 nanoseconds. Unlike GPS, the GLONASS time scale implements leap seconds, like UTC. The Galileo Global Navigation Satellite System is operated by the European GNSS Agency and European Space Agency. Galileo started offering Global Early Operational Capability (EOC) on the 15th of December 2016, providing the third and first non-military operated global navigation satellite system, and is expected to reach full operational capability (FOC) in 2019. To achieve Galileo's FOC coverage constellation goal, six planned extra satellites need to be added. Galileo System Time GST is a continuous time scale which is generated on the ground at the Galileo Control Center in Fucino, Italy, by the Precise Timing Facility, based on averages of different atomic clocks and maintained by the Galileo Central Segment and synchronized with TAI with a nominal offset below 50 nanoseconds. According to the European GNSS Agency Galileo offers 30 nanoseconds timing accuracy. The March 2018 quarterly performance report by the European GNSS Service Centre reported the UTC time dissemination service accuracy was 7.6 nanoseconds, computed by accumulating samples over the previous 12 months and exceeding the 30 nanoseconds target. Each Galileo satellite has two passive hydrogen maser and two rubidium atomic clocks for onboard timing. The Galileo navigation message includes the differences between GST, UTC and GPST to promote interoperability. Topic: System under construction. The Beidou 2 satellite navigation systems is under construction in 2017 but has to add planned extra satellites to achieve its full-scale global coverage constellation goal. Beto Time BDT is a continuous time scale starting at the 1st of January 2006 at 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds coordinated universal time and is synchronized with UTC within 100 nanoseconds. Beto became operational in China in December 2011 with 10 satellites in use and began offering services to customers in the Asia Pacific region in December 2012. The Beto Global Navigation System should be finished by 2020. Topic. Time signal radio transmitters A radio clock is a clock that automatically synchronizes itself by means of government radio time signals received by a radio receiver. Many retailers market radio clocks inaccurately as atomic clocks, although the radio signals they receive originate from atomic clocks, they are not atomic clocks themselves. Normal low-cost consumer-grade receivers solely rely on the amplitude-modulated time signals and use narrow-band receivers with 10 Hz bandwidth with small ferrite loopstick antennas and circuits with non-optimal digital signal processing delay and can therefore only be expected to determine the beginning of a second with a practical accuracy uncertainty of plus or minus 0.1 second. This is sufficient for radio-controlled low-cost consumer-grade clocks and watches using standard quality quartz clocks for timekeeping between daily synchronization attempts, as they will be most accurate immediately after a successful synchronization and will become less accurate from that point forward until the next synchronization. Instrument-grade time receivers provide higher accuracy. Such devices incur a transit delay of approximately 1 millisecond for every 300 kilometers 186 miles of distance from the radio transmitter. Many governments operate transmitters for time-keeping purposes. <laughs> See also